We know this will take trillions, not billions of dollars. We also know that countries, many of whom are burdened by growing levels of debt, simply cannot afford to go green. Here we need a vast military-style campaign. We need a vast military-style campaign to marshal the strength of the global private sector. The global private sector. The global private sector. With trillions at his disposal, at his disposal, at his disposal, with trillions at his disposal, far beyond global GDP, and with the greatest respect, beyond even the governments of the world's leaders, it offers the only real prospect of achieving fundamental economic transition. Two prominent Israeli rabbis have announced that the Jewish Messiah, not Jesus, but the Jewish Messiah is here on the earth and about to reveal himself. Rabbi Yaakov Zitzholz told Radio 2000 that Rabbi Chaim Kavinsky, who passed away earlier this year, had told him that Kavinsky was already in direct contact with the Messiah and that the Messiah is ready to reveal himself to the world. And since then, more rabbis have come out and confirmed that they too have spoken to this Messiah. Religious Jews are taking this very seriously, primarily because Rabbi Chaim Kavinsky was considered one of the two or three top rabbis in the ultra-Orthodox Jewish community in Israel. His, his funeral in the spring of 2022 drew over a million people. The streets were absolutely filled with people. A rabbi who says he's currently in conversations with the Messiah, then some Talmud prophecies that say that the Jewish Messiah is coming this year, and the Russian-Ukraine war proves that, and lastly, a candidate that looks like he's gaining prominence in Israel that points to him potentially rising to the level of prominence that we will need to see to fulfill the prophecies of the false prophet and the Antichrist. This is uh, four days ago. These rabbis are lining up to talk with this guy. There's nobody else that they're doing that. Kushner's not there. Nobody is there. And so this is huge right here. This is very, very big, this video right here. This was yesterday. The assemblage for inspiration in Jerusalem, the Gaion, the Yonaka completes the Torah. He reads the last portion of the Torah. Check this out. This is going to blow you away. Look at this. This is the people that it, people, these are the people trying to, trying to get in to listen to this guy. This guy's like a rock star. This place is packed. Look. The people are trying to get in there. And, look, and watch what, and look, the people are even above on top of the roof trying to get in. This is wild. And look, they're lined up down the street trying to get in to see this guy. And you come inside here, this place is absolutely packed to the guilds. And look, you got the, the, the rabbis up front here. This place is packed.
Rabbi Yaakov Zischoltz told religious broadcast Radio 2000 that Rabbi Chaim Knivsky, who passed away earlier this year, had told him that Knivsky was already in direct contact with the Messiah. To understand why religious Jews are taking this seriously, it's important to know that Rabbi Chaim Knivsky was considered one of the two or three top rabbis in the ultra-Orthodox Jewish community in Israel. On March 31st, 2022, an article from Israel 365 News says Talmudic prophecy reveals Russia-Ukraine war indicates Messiah's arrival as early as 2022. I'll read the most important parts of this article that point to what the rabbi is claiming here, and it says that the rabbi explains that the nation of Israel will experience redemption in the seventh year of the sabbatical year, which we are in right now. Furthermore, the rabbi adds that the war in Ukraine is happening in the months that are associated with redemption, Adar, which the Jewish people celebrate their redemption from the destruction during the holiday of Purim and Nisan in March and April, where the Jewish people celebrate the redemption from Egypt on the holiday of Passover. The Talmud says that the Jewish people will be redeemed in the seventh year in the sabbatical year. Not only are we in the sabbatical year, but we are in the three months of the year that are really geared for redemption. That's two months of Adar, where the redemption of Purim occurred in the following month of Nisan, where the redemption of Passover, leaving Egypt, occurred. Rabbi Richard explains that the Talmud prophesies wars in the seventh year and in the eighth year, the Messiah will arrive. The Tractate of Jerek Azuda in the 10th chapter, the first law, it says that there will be wars during the seventh year, specifically at the end of the seventh year. At the beginning of the eighth year, the Messiah of David will come to redeem the Jewish people, the Mashiach, the son of David. The rabbi explains that when the wars end in the seventh year, the Messiah, a descendant of David, arrives in the eighth year, September 2022 to September 2023. Here's the last quote of this article. It says that in the seventh year, there are wars, and that represents the beginning of redemption, and then the Messiah comes. On the eve of the seventh year, so most of the commentaries say that there are, of course, two Messiahs. There's the Messiah, the son of Joseph, who fights the battles, who's the physical side of the redemption of the Jewish people, and that happens during the seventh year wars, etc. And then after the seventh year is over, the beginning of the eighth year, that is the Messiah of David. That's the first time that I've ever heard a reference to the Jewish people expecting or believing in two coming messiahs. But isn't that interesting with what we know from Bible prophecy of the Antichrist and the false prophet? Here we need a vast military-style campaign to marshal the strength of the global private sector with trillions at its disposal. This video is just a quick update on the person that the Christians call Yeskiyahu ben David. He is also called the Yanuka. About a year ago, in April, the Christians claimed that we, the Jews here in Israel, proclaimed this person as our Jewish Mashiach, or the Jewish Messiah, which we have all been waiting for. Now it's been more than a year since the Christians claimed that we proclaimed this rabbi as our Mashiach. And clearly, if that was true, then everyone would know and everyone would be talking about it in Israel. The other way we would know if he is, in fact, the Mashiach, is we would be seeing the third temple rebuilt on the Temple Mount in Yerushalayim. Something that unfortunately has not taken place yet. <laughs> Plus, the recent arrival of red heifers in Israel. Is it a prophetic sign that the Messiah is on the way? And more Jewish visits on the Temple Mount than any time since the Roman destruction of the biblical Jewish temple. These are the red heifers that landed at Israel's Ben-Gurion airport. Rabbis believe the ashes of a red heifer are necessary for purifying priests to serve in a future temple. The heifers were discovered and brought to Israel with the help of the Bone Israel Building Israel organization and its team leader, Byron Stinson. Rabbis from the Temple Mount Institute approached Stinson about the unique cattle. They said, Byron, could you look in Texas and find us a red heifer? I wasn't expecting that, and it was shocking to me to think about it, but I know a lot of ranchers, and I know a little bit about cattle, being from Texas, and I always say yes to these Jewish rabbis because they're my friends, and I love them, and uh, why not? This began an in-depth process of finding the rare heifer that meets key stipulations found in the Bible. The Bible gives us a clue as to the significance of the red heifers here in uh, Numbers chapter 19, verse 1 and 2, where it says that God spoke to Moses and Aaron saying, This is the ritual law that God has commanded instruct the children of Israel to bring you a red cow without blemish, in which there is no defect, and on which no yoke has been laid. So it says that we're supposed to take a perfectly red cow with no uh, white hairs or dark hairs at all, and a cow that no yoke has ever been on. So as a result, it's very, very rare to find a baby cow that is completely red. We got busy. I used my technology people out of my businesses. First, we identified the type of cows that would be good. And 
then once we located the actual farms, we sent out messages to them and started hunting. And of course, they just wanted me to find one red heifer, but I just got committed. After I got to looking, I decided we can find more than that. And uh, so happy that we were able to bring five. The ashes of the red heifer would be used to purify water from the Gihon Spring in the city of David. Just a few ashes could purify thousands of gallons of water. That water can be then purified priests from any contact with a dead body, so they can offer sacrifice in the temple. Some Jews go every single day to a ritual bath, to a mikvah, in order to approach God in prayer in purity. However, it is not the same because we don't have the red heifer. Once we have the red heifer, we'll be completely pure and we'll be able to rebuild the temple. As I read the Bible, this rebuilding of the temple happens during a time when the world's in need for it. And I think we're at that time, just as a person that's watching events in the world, that we really need to come back to our roots and back to our God. I think we're very close to that time. I really do. The red heifer must also be two years old. These cattle are just around a year old and could qualify in just over a year. So if they're able to make it without growing the white hairs or black hairs, I think with five of them we have a really good chance of that. And they will be the first one in 2,000 years. Listen to this. Instead of carrying your wallet in your back pocket or your purse, a tech company wants you to keep it under your skin. Hmm. All right. So let's explain here. Wallet More is selling microchips implanted in your hand as an alternate payment. Could this be the future? Maybe. Once you set up your card info in the company's app, look at this. It says payments could be as easy as swiping your hand over a card reader. Right now, chips are not sold in the U.S. Crazy. Chip girl here. So a lot of you are either new or are still confused on what the chip in my hand really does. Inside of my hand, there's a very small piece of technology. It's about the size of a grain of rice. Its most basic function is to be used as a key. We use the technology to lock up our front door and other places around our house. The thing that's different about my hand that a key doesn't have is that I can reprogram this anytime I want. So let's say I move or somebody gets the information on my chip, I can easily change it. You guys also keep asking why we chippy everything in our house. When we say something is chipped, all we really mean is that it has the capability of being locked. So let's say we have guests over. If they want to lock this area of the house, they can. Or when we chippy the gym, because we don't want our guests or our kids to get hurt on this equipment. What underpins a world order is always the financial system. Mm. I, I was very privileged. My father was an advisor to Nixon when they came off the gold standard in 71. And so I was brought up with a kind of inside view of how very important the financial structure is to absolutely everything else. And what we're seeing in the world today, I think, is we are on the brink of a dramatic change where we are about to, and I'll say this boldly, we're about to abandon the traditional system of money and accounting and introduce a new one. And the new one, the new accounting, is what we call blockchain. It means digital. It means having an almost perfect record of every single transaction that happens in the economy, which will give us far greater clarity over what's going on. It also raises huge dangers in terms of the balance of power between states and citizens. In my opinion, we're going to need a digital constitution of human rights if we're going to have digital money. Uh, but also, this new money will be sovereign in nature. Most people think that digital money is crypto and private. But what I see are superpowers introducing digital currency. The Chinese were the first. The U.S. is on the brink, I think, of moving in the same direction. The Europeans have committed to that as well. At Europe's biggest technology event, a digital appearance from Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky. In a hologram projection, Zelensky told some of the world's biggest tech firms they have a unique opportunity to invest in Ukraine's digital future, even as Russia's invasion continues. Digital infrastructure is the most stable and efficient one during the war. And now we offer the world's leading tech companies a digital land lease, as land lease helped save Europe and the world from tyranny. During World War II, the digital land lease can now become a key contributor to the victory of democracy. We are about to have after this a round table hosted by the UK Foreign Secretary on what we can do to rebuild Ukraine and to stop disinformation as well. Hello everyone, we are coming to you from across Europe. Listen to this lineup, brilliant minds in Stockholm, 
Vivitech, that's in Paris, the next web in Amsterdam, and from Founders Forum, just outside London. We are also very excited to include Super Return in Berlin, London Tech Week, AI Summit, and Dublin Tech Summit. I'm Dale King at CBS News. I'm Amanda Holden, actress and TV host. I'm Ira Ariel Kai, tech founder, CEO, and proud British Ukrainian. I'm Peter Gabriel, singer, songwriter, and actress. I'm Dimitri, tech founder, CEO, and proud Ukrainian. I am Bernard-Henri Lévy, philosopher, writer, and filmmaker. Most of us are lucky to live stable and normal lives. But for my friends, my colleagues and collaborators in Ukraine, life has become an existential struggle. Everything they know has been turned upside down in just a few months. Thousands have lost their lives and many more have lost loved ones. Millions of people have been forced to flee their homes and escape their own country with nothing but the clothes on their backs and a few meager possessions. Oh, sorry. <sighs> Families have been split apart and many more live in constant fear and danger. In a few minutes, we'll meet a brave and humble man at the heart of the struggle who has risen above expectations. He did not choose to have his nation into this bloody war. But when the aggressor stood on the doorstep of his country and began raining shells on his people's homes, he rallied his country and he rallied his troops into action. Today, we are rallying our own, the leaders and free thinkers here today. We invite you to listen to President Zelensky's message, unite behind him, and show your support for Ukraine. For those who cannot hear the president talk live, you're in luck. Technology, we've got it. And the social networks will ensure his words are just a click away. His holographic address will travel far and wide in augmented reality. With luck, the president's message will inspire the worldwide tech community into action in support of his cause. Technology has so many applications, but today we want to use it to its full potential. It truly is a united tech and creative community who want to rally behind this very important cause. And they are delighted, and delighted is a word here, to say they have the opportunity to do some real tangible good right this second. We can take action by withdrawing technology from the Russian leadership, by building technologies that can help the Ukrainian war effort, by backing startups, by outsourcing development to a talented Ukrainian workforce, and by inspiring and motivating whoever we can to keep the message alive. Please welcome my hero, President Zelensky. Ladies and gentlemen, we live in a time of super opportunities. It's no longer a science fiction that artificial intelligence is now as smart as humans. It's not just in the news. This is the reality. Data from state registers, banks, and other sensitive information is stored in cloud services. Perhaps it's unusual for residents or heads of government to use a hologram to address people, but this is not the only aspect of Star Wars that we are putting into practice. We will defeat the Empire too. Well, it's obvious that all of these technological possibilities can change public life. They can simplify government to people and government to business relations. No bureaucracy, no corruption, no delays. For the first time in human history, the state is 100% comfortable for people. That is our goal. And we can make it real. We have already proved that digital infrastructure is the most stable and efficient one during the war. And now we offer the world's leading tech companies a digital land lease that is our offer to you. Just as land lease helped save Europe and the world from tyranny during World War II, the digital land lease can now become a key contributor to the victory of democracy in the struggle against an empire that hates everything modern. It's in Ukraine. And right now that we can release the most advanced technologies to help people and protect institutions during this war. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand, or in their foreheads. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Let's say you're grabbing your favorite coffee beverage, or heading into the office, or checking out. Just hover your palm and you're on your way. It's as easy as that. Sign up is free and takes less than a minute. All you need is a credit card, your phone number, and your palm. That's it. get closer to their spirituality. Different faiths are starting to use it. Robots can deliver sermons, give advice. Santo, does God exist? And pray with you. It's a bit like Catholic Alexa. These university students have come to see Minder for the first time. A whole sermon 
delivered by a robot. My name is Santo. What brings you here on this beautiful day? Santo, is there a heaven? It is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for someone rich to enter the kingdom of God. Most faith communities are only at the beginning of discussing AI and robots. But whether we like it or not, this technology is here to stay. And with many religions contemplating it or developing tools and techniques based on it, it could change the way we worship. Islam, Judaism, Christianity and Hinduism, as well as other world religions, were represented at the Congress. This year, Pope Francis, as well as the Grand Imam of Al-Azhar, Sheikh Ahmed Al-Tayyab, were among the renowned guests. And the voice of spiritual leaders who have great authority among the world's population called for the joint overcoming of all the challenges. This is very important. The image of leaders of so many world religions sitting together around a table sends a strong message of unity in diversity to the world. The main result is that we are sitting together, we are speaking together, and we are understanding that to find solutions for the problems in the world is not during the war, but sitting together and speaking. Participants of the Congress planted trees in the new Peace and Harmony Park in the capital of Kazakhstan. This ceremony is a symbol of hope for the interfaith dialogue to grow and bring about change, to unite different communities across the globe, and to inspire people to join their efforts in the name of peace. Calling on the world's faithful to join the fight to solve the climate crisis. Forty religious leaders gathered at the Vatican on Monday to add their voice to the growing chorus calling for world leaders to take real action to tackle the crisis. The Catholic Pope, Pope Francis, called the meeting but preferred to let others speak. I call on all young people, regardless of their religion, to be ready to fight against any action that may damage the environment or increase the climate crisis. The meeting was labeled Faith and Science, and many spoke of the need to fuse our rational and spiritual sides. Together, faith and science, people of different faith, can transform fear in hope, anxiety in confidence, inaction into action. Last week, he virtually attended the Youth for Climate conference in Milan, backing the work of 400 young delegates as they drafted proposals for the UN summit. Meanwhile, outside conferences, a growing protest movement is adding its own pressure. A consensus has been building that real action must come out of the Scotland summit. And to that, we now have the support of the world's leading spiritual figures.